the pieces are flying all over the board in this game between Alareza Ferruzja and Wesley So played in the Speed Chess Championship. Wesley So jumped out to a big lead in that match, seven games to two. But then when it moved to the three-minute portion, uh, Alareza Ferruzja actually tied the match. He dominated that portion. This game comes from that part of the match. In this $150,000 total prize fund event, so let's jump right in and see this exciting chess. Maybe we can learn something about how to make our pieces as active as possible. Wesley So has white. Alareza Ferruzja has black. Let us jump right in. D4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7. The king's Indian defense, which Alareza was playing uh, in this event. And uh, I was very excited to see that. I really do like this opening. It leads to interesting play. e4, d6, knight f3, castles, bishop to e2 and e5. Oh, black has allowed white to build a big pawn center, but black eventually must strike in the center to get their fair share of territory. Um, here, uh, Wesley So plays bishop to e3, the so-called Gligorich system, named after the great player Svetozar Gligorich. Um, castling is the main move. The idea is after knight c6, d5, knight to e7, uh, white gets a setup where they're going to play for a c5 break, black for an f5 pawn break. But you'll notice this bishop is still on c1. Uh, in the Gligorich system, the idea is that if black were to play knight c6 here, then after d5, knight e7, knight to d2, now this bishop is perfectly positioned to support a c5 pawn advance, the main uh, break for white in this line. And white scores huge from this position, well, over, over 75 uh, percent. So knight c6 is considered a strategic mistake here. Uh, knight g4 is common, uh, as is e d4, but Ferugia here plays the move knight b to d7, avoiding the tempo gaining d5, but supporting his pawn on e5. Castles and c6. Usually this signifies the idea that black wants to take on d4, play rook to e8 to attack the e4 pawn, and then play on the dark squares e5 and c5. Um, so to just preempt that, Wesley So plays d5. He goes ahead and gains space in the center of the board, and Ferruzja plays c5. So now we have a very clear structure, a locked structure in the center, but that doesn't mean there's not going to be active pieces. There will be. Um, White's main strategy, the normal strategy here, is to play a3 and b4 and attack this c5 pawn. Black's main strategy is to play f5 and break there. Now, Ferruz just sticks with the normal strategy, but Wesley So goes in a bit of a different direction. He plays knight to e1. Now, that's normal. The knight can go to d3 to support the b4 push, clears the way for f3 to support uh, the e4 pawn. Um, here, king to h8 is played by Alareza. The idea here is to play the knight to g8 to clear the way for the pawn to go to f5, but also to support bishop to h6. You'll notice this bishop at g7 is quite bad. It's blocked by this pawn on e5. So he would love to trade it off for this bishop at e3. Uh, but here, Wesley plays a not very common move. It's not a, a novelty. It's been played before, but the idea is g4. And he's clamping down on the f5 squared, trying to make it harder for Alareza to play the move he wants to play. The knight goes back. Uh, to g8, he can play bishop h6 now, although now this pawn could go to g5. Actually, he can't because the queen and bishop are on it. It doesn't matter because after queen d2, Wesley so controls the h6 square, so Alareza could not trade off the bishop with bishop to h6. f5. He gets in his main pawn break. Uh, pawn takes, pawn takes, pawn takes. Knight d to f6. So now Alareza is aiming his bishop at uh, the f5 pawn. Uh, White's pawns have been broken up a bit, but he does, he still has a space advantage. Um, computers see this as equal. Um, I would think most King's Indian players would be very happy to get this position as black. Wesley So plays king to h1. The idea is to move the rook over and try to take advantage of the open g file. Bishop takes pawn, rook to g1, doing that just as we said. Now queen to d7, connecting the rooks, supporting the bishop at f5, and also defending g7. F3, keeping this square, this trying to keep this E4 square under control. Uh, this can often be a nice place for white to uh, put a minor piece. Knight to E7, allowing Ruzja to play rook to G8 to challenge this bishop at G1. Also, the knight can go to G6 and gain activity that way. And now knight to D3. Now here, 
Alareza plays a very powerful idea, and uh, it's an idea. If you play the King's Indian, either side of it, it's an idea you must be aware of. We talked again about how this bishop on g7 is not a great piece because it was biting on granite with this e5 pawn. But now that there's nothing blocking that pawn, he can play this move e4, freeing the bishop on the long diagonal and getting a great amount of activity for his pieces. Also, when this f-pawn is gone, white's king will be that much more vulnerable. e4, a very strong move. Knight to f4. This knight could at some point maybe jump into e6. Ef3, bishop f3, and knight to g6. This knight can go to e5. It also challenges the knight on f4, and that knight immediately does take on g6, which is also check. Bishop takes g6. And now, bishop to h6. We talked about how this once bad bishop is now roaring along this diagonal. So Wesley So seeks to trade it off. Um, rook a to e8, just activating his pieces. He says, if you're going to trade it off, I want you to lose the tempo. Rook to g3, offering to, or preparing to double on the g file. And now Feruzja does go ahead and take that bishop. Queen takes h6. Now, we may say, well, he opened up that long diagonal. And now his bishop's been traded off. Was it worth it? Well, it was worth it because White had to dedicate quite a few tempos to dealing with uh, that powerful bishop. Also, it gave his pieces some other squares. So it was definitely a, a strong idea. Queen to g7 was played by Alareza, offering the exchange of queens. Computers prefer queen to f5 uh, with the idea of maybe knight to d7, knight to e5, uh, where Black's pieces stay a little bit, uh, a little bit more active. And uh, queen takes g7 is also the computer recommendation, going ahead and taking. And then after knight to b5, we see there's an attack on d6 and a7. And white is a bit better in that position. But instead, Wesley so avoids the exchange of queens and plays the queen back to h4. Perusia uh, wants those queens off, so he plays knight to g8 to support the queen to go to h6. Rook a to g1, and now queen to h6 is played, and queens do come off of the board. Rook to h3 aims at the knight at h6, so he supports it with king to g7. But you can see that also steps into this pin, so Wesley so thinks he can take advantage of that by playing bishop to e4, piling on to that uh, g6 square. But Feruzja plays a very nice move. Rook to f4, not only putting pressure on this bishop, threatening to take it and get two minor pieces for a rook, but also putting x-ray pressure on the c4 pawn of white. Bishop takes g6 hg6. Now rook h to g3, attacking the g6 pawn. Something has to be done about that. So the rook goes back to f6 to defend the g6 pawn. Now knight to b5, attacking a7 and d6. But d6 is defended at the moment by the rook at f6. So knight to f5, hitting the rook at g3. Now here, uh, computers show the strongest idea is probably something like rook to g4. Basically just uh, staying on this g6 pawn if possible. Uh, but he plays rook to b3, putting some pressure on the b7 pawn. Alareza just defends it laterally with rook to e7. And uh, the best idea for white here, it turns out, is either to play something like rook to f3 or rook to h3. Just stay in contact with this king side because these two rooks in this knight could become very active very quickly. Um, but instead, he goes ahead and grabs the material. Knight takes a7, and it turns out that this is a blunder that Feruzja ruthlessly exploits. Knight to d4 is his first move, attacking the, uh, the rook on b3. Also, the knight's just simply on a very good square at d4. The rook goes to b6, putting pressure on d6, but further separating uh, the piece from the king. Notice now this knight and this rook are far away from white's king, and that's going to be trouble. Rook to e2, threatening to double, with the rook also coming to f2 and just taking on h2. Rook takes b7, check, and Feruzja doesn't care about the pawn at this point. He's all about the attack. So the king goes to h6. Rook to b8, an attempt to check from behind and maybe defend the h2 pawn uh, from that distance. But now knight to f3, crushing. He attacks the rook. At g1, he is also threatening rook to h2 checkmate. This construction of a knight and rook is a very common mating pattern. 
Um, and if the rook goes to g2 to block that, then just rook to e1, forcing the rook back, and then it's mate on g1 instead. So uh, Wesley So plays rook to h8 check, as we discussed, to defend this pawn from behind. But after king g7, Alareza wins on time here, uh, but it doesn't really matter. The position is completely lost for uh, Wesley So after rook to, the rook is under attack from the king, and this rook is under attack from the knight. So it's a double attack, basically. And if that, when that rook moves, knight takes g1, would be a decisive material advantage, and these rooks would come in and hoover everything up. So a very nice win for Alareza in this really compelling speed chess championship. Thank you for joining us at Chess Dog. See you again soon. Bye.